Fantastic. All right, so I've got the floor. I've got a wall. There's the uh, larger block and a smaller block. There's, that's not a block. There's a pulley system or a single pulley that is connected to the wall. And then there's a cable that connects all of these together. Like so. And there is a force here. So force M2, M1, and we'll go with a coefficient of friction here and here, and it's kinetic friction. All right, so that's our problem, right? And I don't, it doesn't matter to me what they asked for, probably the acceleration of the system, tension in the string, whatever. It's all the same. Um, I'm going to leave it like this. That way, no matter what numbers you have, you can do your problem on your own. All right. So if you're having trouble with one like this, you are going to have trouble on the test on Friday. Just a brief reminder, your test covers everything. It's going to be basically the entire gamut of what we've been talking about on force. So it's basically what anything they could ask on the AP exam to be in the test. We've covered all of dynamics now. so. My expectation is I just choose any dynamics question. As long as that dynamics question isn't particularly heavy on uh, calculus, I feel as though it doesn't really matter for me, you guys should be able to handle it. So if it's circular motion, if it's pulley systems, if it's this kind of stuff, um, it's all fair game. So in order to prove that it doesn't really matter how complicated it is, it's all the same kind of garbage, I'm just going to start with the free body diagram as one would expect. And this one's a pretty straightforward free body diagram. So I've got, well, let's do with M1 first. Definitely experiencing a downward force of weight, upward normal force. And those should be drawn in such a way as to demonstrate balance. We are told the system is accelerating. That would mean that there must be an unbalanced force this way and it has to be tension which means there must be a frictional force this way and they are unbalanced. I'm gonna call this normal force one and this friction force one, although that, that part doesn't really matter. I'm still gonna do it that way. You'll see why. All right, that's it. Any questions about that? All right. Box on the table. It's experiencing a variety of forces as well, starting with what we're led to believe is more weight downwards. So M1, I'm sorry, M2G. It's also a downwards normal force equivalent to N1. All right, Newton's third law. And then an upward force, which I'll call N2. Now, the left and right forces, a little more difficult to deal with, but not terrible. There's going to be one big force to the right, friction. There's going to be a tension to the left, which should be equivalent to the tension force on block one. And it also must, again, it must pull to the left. There's going to have to be a frictional force due to the ground. I'll call that F2. And a frictional force due to the other block above it, which is a Newton's third law force, which I will call F1. All righty, that's it, that's the problem. So at this point, all you have to do is put all that good stuff together. Uh, there are things about the problem that I think are going to be true. And that most important is gonna be the fact that the acceleration of both blocks has to be the same. I'm gonna establish a direction of positive that's, ah, uh, Mr. Shelton, stop this. There, better, you should expect more. I'm going to go with this direction to be positive. 
Any problem with that? All righty. So let's deal with uh, block one. Net force in the x direction equals m1a. So I'm thinking tension minus friction one equals m1a. The net force in the y direction is zero. So I think I can cut a few corners and say the tension minus mu m1g equals m1a. Can I cut those corners? This is AP Physics C, by the way. So I'm thinking yes, but if you don't know where that came from, you should probably ask. All righty, appropriate wait time was given. Net force equals, I'm sorry, in the X direction equals M2A. That system will accelerate. Net force in the Y direction on this bad boy is zero. I probably should go ahead and pull that one out because I've got N2 has to equal N1 plus M2G. And N1, we already have a value for, so N2 equals M1 plus M2G. Any question about that? Or is my head in the way? No, oh, bummer. There, write it down. All right, we're good. So let's go on to the other one. We've got in the X direction, I've got this pulling force to the right, minus tension, minus F1, minus F2. Now all is equal M2A. We good? All righty. Um, a variety of things I have to do for substitution here. We already know what F1 equals. So I can substitute that in. So I'll get this pulling force minus tension minus mu M1G minus F2. It's got to be mu times normal force two. It's got to be. So that's got to be the frictional force. So mu M1 plus M2G equals M2A. Kind of ran into that, so let's uh, there. M two A. That's it. We have done all that we can using Newton's laws, and even went a little bit further because we did more than just Newton's laws. We used friction equals mu times the normal force. I think we have reached the limit of what Newton's laws can do. I don't know what the problem even asked, but. I am pretty confident we could find the acceleration of this system. So let's go that route. And that's gonna involve using these two relationships. I'm gonna add these two relationships together and eliminate the tension between them. I think that's probably the most likely thing to do. Come on, let me get the handles on this sucker. There we go. So I'm thinking, Let's see, F minus T minus mu M1G minus mu G M1 plus M2 equals M2A and tension minus mu M1G equals M1A. I'm gonna add those together. On the right side, I'm gonna get M1 plus M2 times A. The left side, on the other hand, I'm going to have the T's cancel. Get rid of those. So I'll have F minus mu M1G, mu M1G, mu M1G. So minus three mu M1G. And then minus mu M2G. Yeah, that's the answer. Any questions about that? Whatever you need, you can get it from there. This is everything. This is the motion equation, or this is the uh, dynamics equation that tells what the acceleration is. 
I've got a total mass of the system there. I would expect that acceleration here. The three is interesting, but that's the way it goes. Huh? I just keep up. You know, there's trouble when you were at home. Huh? So you didn't know there's trouble when you were at home. My head was never in your way then. Yeah. You never complained. You're always uh, coming back in. <laughs> All right, is there anything more to this problem or are we done? I don't even know what it asked. Oh, there it is, you got the acceleration. So I don't know what your different numbers were, but probably they could have varied mu, m, whatever. Uh, there's nothing particularly interesting here once you realize what you have to do, but don't be complacent. If this were me, oh, there's all sorts of places we could go with this problem. I mean, one of the things we could do with this problem if this were me, Let's get that out of the way. And uh, how about just have, you know, I don't know, maybe another, something like that right there. Pull that guy to the right with all the stuff you're doing. This is, that's a good idea. I got use that inertia so the box doesn't move. The pulley then moves. I like this problem. This one's fine. Good stuff right there. So, you know, just be aware that there's a lot of places we can go with this problem. It doesn't have to be what you see here. And I have no trouble watching you guys squirm. So. There it is. Next question, uh, sixteen or 15. So let's see what number 15 is all about. Sorry, I'm just pulling it up. Now that uh, mastering has finally made an appearance, I should be able to pull it right from the question. No one asked about 15 yet. So this will be the first one, first time I'm doing number 15. Hope I can, you know. Oh, let's see. 65 of you did your homework out of 74. That's not great. Six sevenths. So you would probably not be happy if six sevenths was your grade. But there it is, number 15. Really? Oh yeah, I did this Did this one. This one's lame. I mean, lame for you guys. It's fine for me. It's got an incline with a box hanging off the edge. There's absolutely nothing interesting about this question. So if you're wondering whether this could be on the AP exam, I'm sorry, on your exam on Friday, sure, why not? I could see this as just like multiple choice. It's not interesting enough to really even keep my attention. There we go. And there's a box hanging off the edge. You know the best part about today being over? I will not get any more text messages reminding me to get out there and vote. No, because polls will close eventually. No point in letting us know about voting once the polls are closed. No more commercials, no more text messages, no more stupid emails, no more stupid flyers in my mailbox. Just be done. All right. My ballot was counted a month ago. All right, so um, M2, M1, and how about uh, theta? See, no reason why we have to plug numbers in, except that when we're done with this, it looks like hell. So I kind of like that. So um, they ask a variety of questions, but the first one is, what is the minimum mass for the system not to slip? So all you people at home, give me a thumbs up or thumbs down. You did this question. All right, that's not very many thumbs up or thumbs down, but there's only like five of you with your stupid cameras on. The rest of you guys are just, you know, slouches. All right, so the fact that they're 
Starting the problem out with the system not moving means net force is zero, which means the tension in the cable is M2G. And once you, once you put that together, this problem is not particularly challenging. All I have to worry about, oh, I did it again. You should. Yeah, it's just, there's this one button right, you know, right in the wrong spot. I am left-handed and I write upside down. So this button right there, that one, that's what does it. Yeah. Anybody in the room left-handed? All right, well then why should I bother telling all of you? It's a secret, us lefties keep. You stupid righties do everything the same. Us lefties, we're a little bit interesting. There's about, um, there's a whole, there's a whole bit of research on left-handed versus right-handed people. You should probably look into it, if for no other reason that it's interesting. There's a, a whole body of statistical evidence suggesting that there's issues with people who are left-handed. That's that's not great to know, but uh, higher instances of, of, of brain cancer amongst left-handed people. You can correlate just about anything if you have enough numbers, right? But it's also the way in which you learn to write. I don't, a true left-handed writer would keep their hands the way most of you true right-handed writers would keep them, which is flat on the desk. And you would be writing in the direction with your hand underneath the letters as you form them. That's how the majority of right-handed writers write. Um, there are left-handed writers that write like I do, which I write above the letters as I write. So my wrist curls around and I write above the letters as I'm writing them. Now, you guys as right-handers know you probably wouldn't do that. And there's a lot of reasons why, but one of them is because the way left-handers tend to do that is the more ambidextrous they are, the more they write upside down because they're utilizing parts of the brain that would enable them to write with their right hand and they're attempting to form the letters the way the right hand side of their brain would have them do it. So it's kind of a mess. It's why I can write with actually both hands. Um, I don't on my iPad necessarily because I've got everything set up for my left hand to hit the buttons, but I could just as easily flip it around and start doing it with my right hand. If I'm on the board, I can write with both hands. And, and I someday maybe, someday, when we return to the way school used to be, I will. What Devon, Devon, what do you want? Depends on my mood, I've done it. I've put the equal sign where my body is and just done both sides of an equation before. So. Well, you know, um, my job is just to be, a, you know, like a circus act somewhere. Well, no, I'd go more like circus. Let's face it, this whole thing is fake. I don't know any physics. I just have to be a day ahead of you, right? All teachers like that. It's just, it's just a bunch of parlor tricks and, and you know, magic. <laughs> so I just study all the answer sheets. I don't know physics. That's what I did. I checked it all before you guys got in the room. So if I could do something, why would I teach? Right? That's why I'm stuck here. So I think I've got a variety of forces. I'm not sure I drew them to scale particularly well. And I think that normal force is really not lined up particularly well. I'd like to do a better job of that. But either way, I think that's what we've got. And the net force is zero. So when I, I should do this the long way because I do have people who have never done physics before this year. So I should, you know, be a good steward of the knowledge, but I'm just so tired of saying, okay, put your angle right here and then draw yourself a triangle and make sure the right angle is there. And this one's going to be MG cosine. Theta. I just want to skip all that stuff because I'm just done. Sign slides. Wow. I would never say that in class, but I'm repeating it so that you guys all know. Devon said sign slides. So there it is. A little piece of mystic energy from Devon. By the way, net force equals zero. So in the x direction, that means tension minus friction minus mg sine theta equals zero. 
Um, that doesn't do us very much good, but we know that the net force in the y direction also equals zero. So normal force minus mg cosine theta equals zero. Neither one of them getting us what we want, which is the mass. And we can go a little bit further here and say that tension is m2g, which means I have to put the m1 here and the m1 there. It gives me a little bit more information, but we need something else, which I think all of you know is going to be something like that. So um, I'm going to preserve the inequality and uh, make this substitution and that substitution. And it is incredibly important that we understand from the beginning that we were told that this is the minimum mass of the block on the table before it begins to slip. If it was the maximum mass of the block on the table, I would have had to have done something different. What? Right, friction would have switched direction. We were talking about the maximum block that I could put on the table, because if it was the maximum size block, it would be right before the block was going to break friction and slide down the ramp. That one little difference, completely separate problem. I am thinking that because of this particular set of circumstances, I will be left with the mass has to be greater than or equal to something. Thus, it's a minimum. I'm, I'm putting that in my mind right now that at the very end, I will have this. Because that means I am looking at the smallest possible one or anything bigger will be fine. But we know it's not anything bigger. It will be anything up to a certain point. But still, that's how it should end up. If I do all this work and it ends up like this, I probably screwed up. And if you're not thinking that way when you do these problems, well, then you're probably not going to get a five. All right. So um, I think we're talking about M, M2G minus M1G sine theta has to be less than equal to mu times M1G cosine theta. So you got to solve that for M1. And when you do, you get M1 equals, um, I'll do the little math, not equals. It's not that way either. M1 is going to be greater than or equal to M2G over G sine theta plus mu G cosine theta which means we can cancel out all of those Gs. Wow. Devon was desperate to get out. I'm glad he's here. There we go. That's the answer. Plug in your values for your numbers and you can get what your actual numerical answer is, but I couldn't care less. All right, how's that? I don't even know who asked about this question, but somebody wanted to hear it. So who's the one who wanted it? Thank you. Thank you. That's what I wanted to know. Are we done? Not really. Because next, <laughs> they want to break friction and have it slide. And you're supposed to figure out what the uh, acceleration. I know. So the next part of this problem is we use this mass, give it a tap, and it accelerates because we break static friction, and now we have kinetic friction. So put the little s here, because that one's the static frictional coefficient, and restart the problem now. Now, this new problem does have some differences. We now have a system where the weight downwards is going to be more than tension so the system accelerates so we can start by saying that m2g minus t equals m2a any question about that all righty not a whole lot changes here except that it's not going to be m2g any longer it's going to be tension and it's not going to be equal to zero any longer it's going to be equal to M1A. So tension minus friction minus M1G sine theta 
equals M1A. I could add these two together if I want, eliminate tension and get, you know, M2G minus friction minus M1G sine theta equals M1A plus M2A. We doing okay? No, it looks like I'm the only one doing this, but that's okay. I'm gonna ace the test. So I need to substitute in for friction now. M2G minus mu M, no, v, need to be careful here. Mu K, there it is, mu K, M1G cosine theta minus M1G sine theta equals M1 plus M2A. Now here's where things get a little bit hairy. I got to take this and substitute it in for M. That looks nasty. And it really looks nasty. And this is where it's one of those things where I tell you, maybe you should put your numbers in if you really want to. But since I'm the only one doing the problem, I'll do it my way because none of you are paying attention except Kieran. So, well, some of you might be paying attention, but I'm looking at Kyle almost face down at the desk. You know, Ryan finally got his head up because he's paying attention. The rest of you are just kind of twiddling. So I assume that you already have your answers and did it correctly. So this is just easy and old school. And I only got like half the class over there. It's all boxes. So I don't even know who's here really anymore. So I'm just going to do it my way, which is going to be M2G minus M2 over sine theta plus mu s cosine theta times, I'm going to put a G right there. That way I can just put sine theta plus mu k cosine theta equals m2 over sine theta plus mu s cosine theta plus m2 a. I forgot mu k on the left side. Okay. The whole happened here. There. So there's not one here then. I think there's only one of them. So I think you're wrong. I think I'm right. I factored out a negative sign, so that took care of that and that. I factored out the G, and I factored out the M1. So, sorry guys, you didn't know this, but Max was trying to tell me I was wrong. And I was willing to believe him until he was wrong. He actually had the audacity to suggest I did my algebra wrong. I do a lot of things wrong. I do. Algebra, not normally one of them. What are we solving for here? A, right? Yeah. So, <laughs> put all that underneath the other one and enjoy. The funny thing about this, which you guys might not see from here, M2 cancels out of everything. It's in every term. This is not dependent on the mass of M2. And the reason is pretty simple. We derive the mass of M1 in terms of M2. It's not a surprise that M2 would then cancel here when we're trying to figure out the acceleration. But it might be a surprise to you. It was not a total surprise to me. But this is a just nasty looking thing. It's so hideous. That's why you'd wanna probably drop your numbers in there, make you feel better about yourselves. Do you want me to continue? I can, I can actually get it to like A equals something or we could do another problem. It's going to take me about three or four minutes to get it to A by itself. It's up to you. I couldn't care less. 
Okay. I don't even know what the next one was. Seven. Seven. I don't want to do any more of these problems. I got a whole other class of practice questions to do next class period. I should just tell you guys, just watch the video. <laughs> watch the video, the one I just did. Isn't this one like the same one, but without the pulley? Yeah. Oh, you gotta be kidding me. Whose idea was this one? So you're saying that after doing the pulley one, you still want to see this one. You can say yes, Mr. Sheldon. That's what I mean. It'll be okay. I know I was never this mean to you guys online until you're actually in the room with me. And now I'm mean. You're just not, you know, you're not able to be as happy because you don't have your cool lights above your head like you do in your bedroom. I did it again. <laughs> so this problem is very similar to the other one, except that there's no combined tension force. So I got a force there. I've got M2 here. Why? This says number seven out of 16, 7.24. Okay. All right, so um, Devon has um, made it pretty clear that he doesn't know what number seven actually is. So he had me write all of that down for no reason. So is there anybody who needs me to do this one? Okay, well, spent all that time drawing that picture now. Shut up. <laughs> so which one do you want now? Or maybe we should ask somebody else who maybe is better at understanding what number is what. Like I'm gonna listen to Max? He tried to correct me a minute ago. Uh, I know you don't just you don't deserve that table. You should go to the back room. <laughs> where my daddy, where my dirty clothes are. <laughs> All right, so I got two boxes. What is wrong with this classroom? I'm so done. I'm so done. There, maybe there's better jobs out there. I hear Lowe's is hiring. <laughs> Whoever that is, I don't want to answer. <laughs> what? You said never mind. Yeah, like Joe Mama. I'm not an idiot. <laughs> Jeez. Yes, I am totally done. <sighs> so two different coefficients. The box at the top has the smaller coefficient. So again, to not, this is coefficient two, and we'll call this mass two. Coefficient one, mass one. Uh, how long does it take the package A to reach the bottom? I don't know. That's a motion problem. Tell you what, I'll get the acceleration. You do your own freaking motion problem. All right, is that fair enough? All right, coefficient two is smaller than coefficient one, which suggests that box two is going to have less frictional force acting on it. And I know, having experienced these problems before, that the acceleration is not dependent upon the mass. The mass will cancel out. However, the acceleration of box two on its own would be greater than the acceleration of box one, which means box two is going to push on box one. So there will be a normal force between them. This is gonna have the, ability, the effect of speeding up box one while slowing down box two. 
so they will have a combined acceleration. That likely involves their own inertia. So starting with box one, I bet there's going to be, let's see, a normal force downwards. And I'm gonna call, I'm gonna use a lowercase n. This is the normal force between the two boxes because I'm gonna have normal force one, which is gonna be coming from the uh, weight of that box. And there's gonna be friction. We'll call that friction one. Questions? Good. Box two, weight. Friction two, normal force between the two boxes and normal force two. I believe these are all the forces acting in the system. I should list this as M1 and this one is M2. I'm just gonna skip around a little bit. Net force in the X direction for both boxes is gonna be equal to their M times A. And these will have to be the same A if they're to travel down the ramp together. So that's gonna be, let's do it for a box one first. I'm choosing down the ramp to be positive. So it would be normal plus M1G sine theta minus friction one equals M1A. Box two, M2G sine theta minus normal minus friction two equals M2A. Any questions? All right, net force in the y direction equals zero for both boxes. So N1 equals M1G cos theta, N2 equals M2G cos theta. <sighs> Fun. Fun times. I'm enjoying this immensely. You getting all this, Devon? Good. Make it smaller. Make it smaller. Make it smaller. Go lay by your dish. There. So let's um let's package it all up here. We got friction one is gonna have to be mu one m one g cos theta. And friction two is gonna have to be mu two m two g cos theta. And add these two together, the internal normal force cancels out, and we get M1G sine theta plus M2G sine theta minus mu1 M1G cos theta minus mu2 M2G cos theta equals M1 plus M2 times A. That's it. Plug all your numbers in and get an answer. What? So whenever you have two equations and you solve them at the same angle, like the solve is equal, you can just add the two equations and Oh, I would, yeah. It's a lot easier than substitution. Because one's going to be positive. If you have chosen your direction carefully, one of them is going to be positive and one of them is going to be negative. So they will definitely drop out of the equation when you add them together. And then you can swap the Hopefully, yeah, that, that's the way you're designing it. Now, this is not pretty, clearly. Um, and there's very little I can do here to make that look nicer. It's just, this is the way it is. On the other hand, you'll get an acceleration from this because they gave numbers. And you have, what, an initial velocity of zero, a displacement of two meters or some garbage like that. And they want to know how long does it take to reach the ground. You got to kind of shove all that together and get the acceleration and figure out how long it's going to take to reach the ground. Who had their hand up over here? I missed it. I did three things, but I got it. Okay. I don't think there's any other parts of this, is there? Nope. Yeah, that was um, that was very insightful. Thank you. I, I really enjoyed that experience. So that's it. No other homework question? We have our pop quiz now? I'm all in. There's probably not enough time, but that doesn't mean I, I couldn't give it to you and watch you all fail. Sounds like a good idea. Good idea. At home, is there anybody else who wants one of these done? Number Going nine. once. Oh, go. There are no nine, three, and twelve. 
Number nine. Who's asking for number nine? Sauna. Fine. Fine, sauna. Number nine. I, well, we did number 10. Isn't 10 superior to number nine? So if you understand 10, you don't need number. Oh, this is the rope one. <sighs> Teachable moment. And if I were not in ENM, I would want to write this down. There are three different kinds of density. People in ENM know this. You're going to have to know this. Because when we cover things like center of mass, moment of inertia, converting something into a density is going to be important. And I'd want you to know how to do it. Lambda is linear density. Sigma is aerial density. Not like from the air, but about an area. And rho is volumetric density. So linear density is mass over length. Area density is mass over area. And volumetric density is mass over volume. This string has an entire mass M, an entire length L. I'd like to know the tension in the string at point P, a distance Y above the lowest point of the string, which basically the net force at point P is zero. And at point P, there are two things acting, tension upwards and the weight of the string downwards. Weight of the rest of the rope. So however much rope is beneath point P. So if we can find out the weight of whatever the amount of rope is beneath point P, we have our answer. The way we use a linear density is to take that linear density times a length, in this case, y. And this is going to give us the mass beneath point P. Multiply both sides by G, and you've got the weight beneath point P. So that's the answer. It's not doing it, there we go. The answer is simply to say that the tension in the rope is gonna be equal to lambda y g, and then replace lambda with the mass density of the string, and that's gonna be m over l times y times g. That's the answer. And one of the things that you should notice is that it's percentage the percent of the rope beneath point P. Oh, that's such a disappointment. I guess your quiz will have to wait till the first few minutes of classes tomorrow. And now that we've done a couple of homework questions, I won't feel at all compelled to hold back. Oh, uh, that's right. That's right. Tomorrow I can come in and give you any question I want and not feel bad about it. Because normally that's what I would do. You know me, I'd feel bad about it if you did terrible. I'd feel disappointed. So you guys have a great day at home. Enjoy. You guys have a great day here at school. Enjoy. I'll see all of you someday.